man gives according to what he has. You ever read that in scripture? It's in Corinthians. Man gives according to what he has, not what he hasn't got. Okay. Now let's just say, um, uh, well let me give you an example. <clears throat> Many years ago I was in Kentucky with Brother Jim Whitson and Brother Terry Taylor. Um, was talking about how God was going to bless him, he was going to be a millionaire, and that he would give 10% of, of what he had. And uh, I said to Terry, I said, Terry, before God will give you a million dollars, he's worried about the five dollars in your pocket that you won't give. Okay? See, so if you have five dollars in your pocket, and you have somebody come up to you that has a need, and it's in your power to meet the need, the Bible says you don't have to pray and fast about it. Okay? But just meet the need. But if it's not in, in your power, you don't have money to give, you shouldn't be worried about it because, first of all, they're, they're just asking the wrong person. <laughs> you can't get blood from a stone. All right? You can't give what you don't have. But what you can give them is say, well, the Bible says if two agree is touching anything, it shall be done. So come on, brother, I'm going to pray for you. I don't have any money to give you, but I'm, I'm willing to pray with you that God will bring somebody your way that will meet that need. So there's always something you can do. The Bible says, He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is of a great waster. If you're slothful in your finances... You're a brother to a waster. There's ways, there's, there's programs out there that you can pay your mortgage off in 10, 15 years. You don't have to go a 30 year mortgage. There's ways you can do it. If you borrow $100,000 on a house and you have a 30 year mortgage, do you know you're paying back almost $390,000 in interest alone over the 30 year period? Now, not everybody can pay cash for a house. That's understandable. And there's nothing wrong with having a mortgage. Okay? But you need to be financially advised as to how to pay that house off, excuse me, as fast as you can. So you don't have to pay that high interest. And if you do that, you're a good steward because then you're going to have extra money in the long run. See, the problem with people today is they have too short a vision. They, want, they only look for the now. They don't look for the future. They don't look what's going to happen later on in life. So you know what? Hey, rapture's going to come. Might as well spend it now. <laughs> okay. Might as well run up the bills all the way up to the max. Because it doesn't matter because when the rapture comes, I'm going. Maybe not. But if that's your heart's attitude, that's sin. And if you're living in sin, you're not going to make the rapture. You hear what I said? If you're living in sin. I didn't say if you sinned. I said, but if you're living in sin, there's a difference. If you don't care and just say, well, I don't care, you know, praise God, I'm going in the rapture anyway, so I'm going to go out and buy a new car, buy a new house, I'm going to buy everything, yeah, and I can't afford it, I can't really pay for it, but I, who cares? If you have that attitude, you ain't going in the rapture. Right. Amen. Look at uh, Proverbs 20, verse 4. Look how fast this girl is. You are incredible, Kathy. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the coal. What does that mean? Always an excuse. It's too cold. It's too hot. Too tired. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the coal. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Come on, there's another opportunity. Oh, 21, verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him. Can I say it from another version? The cravings of the sluggards will be the death of them. Because their hands refuse to work. God gives every one of us opportunities in life. Every one of us. 
If we take advantage of those opportunities, we're willing to work hard at it, we're willing to do what God requires of, of us to do, guess what? He'll bless us. See, his hands refuse to labor. But how many know that times have changed? We don't have to go out there and plow fields. But there's other kinds of work we can do. Okay, that would seemingly be easy work, but it's not really easy work because you have to use your mind. And a lot of people behind the desk sometimes work just as hard as somebody that's out there in a construction company leaning on a shovel. No. <laughs> All right. Let's look at uh, Proverbs 24, starting with verse 30. I'm just going to take a quick drink. Very seldom we talk about finances, but we need to talk about that because God's about to bless us, bless our socks off. Amen. So you've got to get ready. Be responsible. See, this teaching's come at a good time. As it comes at this good time, guess what? Now you're responsible. Before, maybe you ha didn't know it, but now you know it, so you're responsible for what you hear, what you know. Just remember this. Every Sunday you come in here, every Wednesday you come in here, and you hear truth, you are responsible for that truth. Don't think for one minute God's going to excuse you. You're going to be responsible for that truth. He said, I went by the field of the slothful. What is a slothful person? Lazy, but what's, what's some of the other attributes other than just being lazy? And, and <sighs> now, how about this? Not willing to take a risk. Not willing to step out and do something, not really to take initiative, not very well motivated to do something, but is satisfied with doing nothing. And by the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. He said, I went by the field of a slothful man, and by the vineyard of a man, void of understanding. Think about it. This man, number one, must have had some money because he owned a vineyard. So he invested in something. Hello? Probably worked hard or maybe had a, some money inherited to him and he bought this field or this vineyard. Okay? But this man didn't have understanding of the vineyard. Watch what happens in verse 31. He said, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns. What happened? He did not take responsibility for what he had. How could God give him more? How can you expo expect a harvest when, you, when you're not taking care of what God has given you? It was all grown over with thorns and nettles and had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. So I'm sure that because that stone wall wasn't there, that animals were going in and out and eating up the land and eating up the grass and, and whatever they're doing on the soil, ruining it, verse 32. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Learn from other people's mistakes. Like I said, you don't go to someone who's bankrupt for financial advice. What you want to do is you want to emulate someone who's successful. You want to go find out someone, like let's say you wanted to open up a pizza restaurant. Okay. All right, you don't go to, you don't go to Little Caesars because Little Caesars closed in this area. They weren't successful in this area. Okay. But you go to a place like Ruiz or you go to a place like Domino's or you go to a place like Pizza Hut or, or you know, not your average Joe's or somewhere where the business has been successful and you go to that person you say, look, I'm trying to get into the pizza business and I would like to... Just sit down with you a few minutes because I know you have experience in some do's and don'ts, what to do and what not to do. And if that person is worth anything, they'll tell you all of their mistakes that they made to save you from making the same mistakes. But it takes something on your part. It takes a willingness to listen, a willingness to take the advice, and to apply it to your situation. Be teachable. He says, when I looked upon it and received instruction, in other words, when he looked upon this field and saw it all gone to waste, he learned something from it. He learned 
that if you don't put your effort into something, guess what? It'll come to nothing. It'll come to nothing. Thirty-three. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Verse 34. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. In other words, like you just got robbed. You've been robbed. At the end of the line, when all of that is said and done, you've been robbed. Okay? Because all these finance companies with all these credit cards and credit card debt and everything, they're just laughing all the way to the bank. You know, they say the average American person is between 30 and 35, uh, 30, I think it was, the last time I checked, it was 20, 20, 28000 to $39,000 in credit card debt or more. Some people have five credit cards and they're all maxed out. Just think about that. Five credit cards maxed out at, say, $20,000. That's $100,000. Is that being a wise steward? Is that being a good steward? It's time I got. Okay. There are certain responsibilities when you have finances. One of them is to take care of your family. Amen? First Timothy 5 eight says that anyone who does not take care of his own family has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Take a look at that, 1 Timothy 5.8. If any man provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel, worse than an unbeliever. In Proverbs, we're also told in Proverbs 13.22 that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Think about that. That's your grandchildren. Not only do you leave an inheritance for your children, but you also leave an inheritance for your grandchildren. And order to leave an inheritance not just to our own children, but to our children's children requires work, discipline, investing, planning, and saving up our money. The Bible tells us that it is through noble qualities that wealth is obtained. Hard work, diligence, sacrifice, and the failure to do these things will result in poverty. That's not to say that all those who are poor are in poverty, are sluggards, or refuse to work, but it does tell us that those kinds of characteristics and flaws will most often lead people to poverty. Now let's look at our text tonight, Luke 19. We read where Jesus tells a parable about three servants who were given charge over some money. In the story, Jesus says that two of the servants wisely invested the money while the third buried it in the ground. In his story, the one who simply buried it in the good ground was called lazy and wicked. Let's look at that, Luke 19. Is this helping anybody? <clears throat> Luke 19. Let's start with verse 11. Nineteen eleven, And as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable because he was near to Jerusalem because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. And he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went on a far country to receive of himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Now, what did Jesus say to these men? Occupy till I come. Occupy in what? and maintaining the investment of what he gave them. Okay? He said, occupy till I come. But, this, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the what? The money, the money that he might know how much every man had gained by what? God wants you to trade. He wants you to invest. He wants you to take, op take advantage of opportunities. Now, how many know that when you take advantage of an opportunity, there's always a risk? 
How many know that faith is a risk? <laughs> it's true. Sometimes you don't know, but you're, you're stepping out on a limb. Say, God, I'm, I'm stepping out in faith right here. Okay? And you step out in faith, and God honors that faith, and he blesses you. Okay, so let's look. Then came the first saying. Let's see. Where would I leave off? That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. Wow. He prospered. He took what God gave him. He was responsible and accountable. And he gained ten talents. Wow. That's pretty good. What was the Lord's response? Verse 17. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant... In other words, you've been responsible for what, which, that you've been responsible to that which I have given you, and you've taken the, you've taken ten and made ten more. Praise God, Hallelujah! Someone get excited. Well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Wow! Look at that. Not only did he get blessed. Here and now, but he got blessed in the future. God gave him authority over ten cities. Hmm. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five talents. Wow. Another gain. God had blessed him. Because he did something with what he got. He didn't waste it. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an astute, astort, what's that word? Astrit, man? Austeet. Austere? Man, that thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou did not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee. What do you call him? So in other words, the ones that took risks because they could have lost money, but they gained, he called them blessed. But the one that was fearful and didn't do anything, put it in a napkin, maybe put it under your bed in your mattress, guess what? He said, Thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an astute man, taking up that I laid not down, reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore thou gavest not thou my money into the bank. Why didn't you at least put it in the bank? I would have got some interest on it. That at my coming I might have required my own with usury. And he said to them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, but he hath ten pounds. He says, For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken away from him. So what is that? What's the story about? Being accountable with what the Lord gives you. Now, some have what, one talent, some have five talents, some have ten talents. It doesn't matter. But be responsible with what God has given you. Amen? Amen? Just a few more minutes. What can we do with what what can we do with money? Well <coughs> come on. There we go. Well, number one, we can further God's kingdom. We should also give to the church to send missionaries, to train people overseas, 
and for the work of the church. You find that in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 13 and 14, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Malachi 3, 7 to 12. The first thing we must do is further the kingdom of God. Second, provide for our own families. Amen. Okay? Find that in 1 Timothy 5, 8 and Proverbs 13, 22. And number three, we can help the poor. You know, I don't know how anyone who is able to can refuse to help someone who is in great need. But if it doesn't just have to be with money either. You know, there's a saying, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. See, it's easy to give somebody a fish. Okay. He'll eat for that day. Well, what is he going to do the next day? So you teach him how to fish. That's what I'm doing here tonight. I'm teaching you how you can be responsible and start to ask God to forgive us for some of the things that we spend our money on and how we waste our money in high interest rates, paying credit cards and all kinds of things. And I'm not trying to condemn anybody here. Please understand that. I don't have anybody in mind. This is just something God put on my heart to share with you to show you that you can get out of debt and get out of debt as fast as you can. And there's ways that you can do that. It's like our welfare system. Our welfare system was designed for people who are misfortuned in life. Something happened, they lost their job, or you know, uh, a spouse died or something, and they couldn't afford certain things, and bill collectors came and took things away, and, and, they, you know, and they just need help. That's what our welfare system was, made, was meant to do, is to help people get back on their feet and to reestablish themselves and to help them in, in areas. But today it's become a lifestyle, it's become a profession where people are professional welfare recipients. And I'll tell you one thing right now, if I was ever president, I would reform that system because it doesn't work. Okay? And we have first, second, third, fourth generations on welfare. And uh, they say, well, it's free. It's free money. No, it's not free because you and I are paying for each, each individual. Not that we don't mind helping. Okay, we've been people that do help. It's not that we don't mind helping. It's just that, you know, there are people that take advantage of the system. So we give to the poor. Invest for our future. How many here are investing for your future? A couple of people, get, get your hands up there, that's good. But also invest for your future. Some people say, well, you know, I'm not going to leave it for the Antichrist. <laughs> well, you're going to leave it anyway. You're going to leave what you got, so what difference is it going to make? It ain't going to make any difference anyway. Is it wrong to mooch off others, especially if we're able-bodied enough to do something to earn an income? You better believe it is. And as we are earning... We should be planning for a day when we aren't able to work as hard or as long as we should. The Bible speaks well of those who leave an inheritance to their children, but not to those who live off their children. We should plan and save for the future. Also, let's look at this. We should enjoy the fruits of our labor. Amen. Come on. Enjoy the fruits of your labor. The Bible doesn't condemn enjoying the results of your work. In fact, we very often read about feasting and celebrations in the Bible after a time of work and production. The first miracle of Jesus was to turn water into wine at a feast of a wealthy man. Come on. See, we don't, we don't read the scriptures. The Bible says that there's a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time to have peace, time to be blessed. What does the Bible say about debt? Anybody know? Let's look at Proverbs 22.7. Praise the Lord. We're going to be done in five minutes, honey. We're going to give you a big hug when we see you after. Praise God. Proverbs 22.7 says what? The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. I like this version. It says the borrower is slave to the lender. The Bible never speaks well of debt. Debt is an anchor around the necks that prevents us from rightful night, uh, restful nights of 
sleep and restricts our ability to invest for our future. The Bible says one person pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor but has great wealth. Debt is a temptation because it allows us to have what we can't afford and have not earned. Yet we pay a larger price for it than someone who can afford it. Conclusion. I'm going to conclude. Okay, I'll cut it short a little bit. So the next time you hear someone villainizing a wealthy person or, or condemning a wealthy person because they are wealthy, remember that the Bible attri attrib attributes wealth to hard work, wisdom, personal sacrifice, patience, perseverance, self-control, and wisdom. Not only that, but the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord brings wealth. Proverbs 10.22, let's close with that. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh what? And he addeth no sorrow with it. Let me just turn this off here so I can be my closing statement for tonight. God is going to bless us. God has a future for us. God has a plan for us. Amen? And all we have to do is be willing to be responsible and accountable for what God blesses us with. And when we can be accountable, I'm not talking about this name it and claim it, blab it and grab it stuff. Okay, that's not what God has intended for us. I'm not talking about sowing in the wind and reaping nothing. But I'm talking about being responsible, accountable for all of the finances God has for us getting out of debt, making sure we're not into credit card debt where we cannot even bless a person. Okay. But making sure that we're responsible and accountable for those things and we can watch God continue to bless us after that. Amen? Amen. And I, I thank God that Linda and I, we have no credit card debt whatsoever. We were in credit card debt years ago when we first got married. And we got out of that debt and we, we made that vow that we would never get back into credit card debt. And we didn't. And God has blessed us with that. That's why we can go on trips every year. We can go on vacation. We can do a lot of things. But I, I'm here to tell you tonight that God is going to do even greater things and bless us beyond our imagination. I want to say something to you. Um, many years ago, my pastor I sat under for many years, served in the, as an elder in his church, called me up on the phone, and he said, Brother Bob, he said, I have something to tell you. And you know, when you're young in the Lord and you're just growing, you know, you're just establishing yourself in the Lord and you think when the pastor calls you and calls you up on the phone, he's got something to, to deal with you on. And he said, brother, he said, I want you to come over. And, you know, I, I don't know if I was going over there. He told me over the phone. I think he told me over the phone. If I can remember because that was so many years ago. He said, I, I don't know if I had a vision or I, I was dreaming or I was sleeping or he said, I don't know what it was, but he said, I was talking with the Lord. Now you have to understand, the, the pastor that I was under was from India. He was a man of God. He was very disciplined. He has a doctorate of divinity. Very disciplined. Very, very, very disciplined man. This man used to fast all the time. I'm not talking about some, some flaky pastor. I'm talking about a real man of God. And uh, he said, uh, I was talking to the Lord. He said, in this vision or dream, he said, I can't tell you which it was. He says, but he said, I asked the Lord about you. I asked the Lord, I said, well, what about Brother Bob? And these were the words that he spoke to, to him. He said, you tell Brother Bob that I'm going to bless him so greatly that he'll never be able to outrun the blessing. And I never understood that. I said, well, God, I, you know, I'll work hard, and I worked for 17 years for Titleist. And uh, God finally took me out of there last, last year. And now I'm saying, Lord, I don't even get a salary from the church. How am I, I going to outrun the blessing? And God brought something into my life recently. A business opportunity. See, I'm telling you about taking, taking risks, taking, taking responsibility, taking a risk. And I'm not saying this to boast to you. I'm, I'm telling you right now, God is going to bless us. And so Linda and I scraped as much money as we could together, and we, we bought into this business. We started last Wednesday. Okay? It's based on compound interest daily. 
Every day it's built on compound interest. Okay, we have our part to do. We have to do something. It takes five, ten minutes the most to learn and to do. We started last Wednesday until this Wednesday right now. We've already made on our investment thirteen hundred dollars. Okay. Now calculating everything out according to what I talked to the um, the district manager of this company. He's one of the supervisors. Well, he's one of the uh, I forget what they call them, he's like a part of, like a, I guess, boss or whatever you want to call him. Like a, he he kind of gives you, it's like a counselor, you know, financial advisor, financial advisor. By this time next year, and I'm not boasting, I'm telling you right now, by this time next year of May, my income will be $105,000. And I'll have $511,000 in the bank. This is an opportunity that I cannot believe. I, I, I just weep at how God has brought this into my life. He brought it in through Brother Diamond uh, and uh, told me about this, and, and I jumped on it right away. You know, I prayed about it, and, and God says, this is how I'm going to bless you. This is how you'll never be able to outrun the blessing. And so within two years, I'm letting all of you know right now, Listen to what I'm telling you. Because what I'm going to tell you is going to come to pass. In two years, we will be building a brand new church. And it, and it will be. It will be debt free. It will be debt free. Listen to me. Now, you can laugh at me, mock me, whatever you want. I don't care. Okay? But you watch what I'm saying. Two years from, from this date, two years from this date, we will have bought land and we have built a church. Because God's going to bless us. And I know that God's going to bless me so that I can be a blessing to his kingdom. I've already told Brother Pedro, I says, in, in a couple of years, you won't have to worry about finances. He worries about finances so much. He wants to build an orphanage. He wants to build a, a, a small hospital facility. We want to be able to have the money to do all of that. See, because my heart's always been missions. You know that. And I believe that God has brought this opportunity to Linda and I. We're excited. I told Linda, I says, get excited, honey, because next June she'll be 62. And I said, you can retire. You can retire next year. Yeah. And uh, just so much of a great opportunity that's come, come our way. I, I can't begin to tell you. But uh, just keep praying for us. Pray that our hearts would not be toward those things, but our hearts will be right with God and that we'll... We'll be able to do what God says for us to do and help people. And I want to help people also to be able to be financially independent themselves. And uh, I'm going to offer this not in church. To sit down. It's not Amway either. Okay, it's none of those none of those th kinds of things. This is buying into a. Uh, this is getting into a business where the business will share with you 50% of their revenue every day. It's a, it's incredible. It's incredible what, what this company is doing. And most of the people that are up ab above me that we've had conference calls with are all Christians. We've prayed on the phone together. We've prayed that God will bless us, not so that we can have money, that money would not be the issue, but, Lord, what do you want us to do with it? Amen. Just think about being able to supply money for missionaries and not have to worry about, you know, where the money's going to come from, or do cake sales or all that s stuff. So I'm excited what God's doing. Amen? Amen? So let's just pray, okay, for God's blessing. If you take accountability for your finances, God will begin to bless you. But he's not going to bless you, press down, shaking together, running over, if you're going to just go deep into credit card debt, go deep into debt, paying high interest rates. That's not accountability and responsibility. So if you have a determination in your heart to to take care of your finances and get things right, guess what? God's going to bless you. Amen? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. I thank you, God, for the many blessings that you've given us and how you're blessing us in such a tremendous way. God, when we cried out to you, we couldn't even get finance for a church that we wanted to buy because they wanted so much money down and we didn't have the money. God, you came through and you supplied this opportunity for us to invest and, and to put money into this, not an investment, but to put money into a business 
that will give us a return by revenue sharing. And so, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Now, Lord, we ask that you would put it in our hearts to be responsible and accountable to you for every cent we get and to use it, Lord, not only for your glory, but also to meet our own needs that you so abundantly supply that, Lord, you, you want us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. That's what you said in the word. And so, God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing for this church and all that you're going to do. And we give you the praise, the honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. I hope this was helpful, that you could help you to get your finances in order. Yeah, I know I saw her. Yeah. And, uh, you know, get things right in your life so God can be blessing you even more. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Our daughter's back. Praise God. Priscilla, and she brought Melissa and two of her friends. I don't know. I think John, is it? Okay, John, and who's the other fellow? And who? Ian. Ian. From Hawaii. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you bring any pineapples with you? Man, I love pineapples. Praise God. I just had some beautiful pineapple in Guatemala. Huh? Every day we had pineapple. It was so wonderful.